So thank you for the invitation. Uh, I have decided uh, to make a hybrid talk because uh, I'm supposed to talk about how to connect string theory to particle physics. So I would like to uh, tell you about uh, what I would consider modern developments in string theory and what implications they have for particle physics, in particular in the context of deep brains, and consequently how we can construct standard models, supersymmetric standard models with particular constructions of intersecting deep brains. And then in the second part, I want to start with the recent developments with this, uh, within this context, the study of non perturbative effects for such uh, vacuum constructions, uh, which are due to the so-called e instanton, which may have important phenomenological implications for such constructions. In particular, they may generate couplings that were perturbatively absent, such as Majorana neutrino masses, New parameter of the uh, supersymmetric standard model, they may modify certain kind of coupling. Uh, this work is based on the uh, original paper which are Blumenhagen and Timo Weigand and more detailed uh, calculations uh, with Robert Richter and Timo Weigand as well as work in progress. And then I plan to conclude and give you some details. Well, Unifying forces of nature, we still believe that string theory is the most promising candidate as a consistent finite theory of extended object strings where elementary particles arise as massless excitations of strings. The major motivation for studying string theory is the fact that within this context, gravitons generically arise as massless excitations of closed strings, so we have quantum gravity aspects within this context for free. On the other hand, we have a very successful theory of uh, other three forces of nature, strong, weak, and electromagnetic, that goes under the name of the standard model. It is based on gauge interactions, uh, where actually the gate symmetry is non-abelian gate symmetry. It uh, consists of like metal, quarks, and leptons, which come in three copies. We also believe that in this context, we have to deal with supersymmetric standard model. And so in the, uh, in the first part of my talk, I would like to motivate how this particular features of the standard model, non abelian gate symmetry, occurs of chiral matter, as well as family replication, together with supersymmetry, comes in the context of modern string theory within deep brains, and where the origin of these properties of the standard models appears to be geometric. Well, before I continue uh, with this modern development, let me just put things a little bit in perspective, because prior to second string revolution, we were perturbatively dealing not with single string theory, but five different string theories, two types of heterotic, two types of a closed supersymmetry theory as well as open string theory. And as far as phenomenology, particle physics from string theory goes, we uh, believe that the heterotic A cos A theory was phenomenologically most promising, and that occupied a large part of my efforts as well. Well, with the second string revolution, it was realized that actually all these different string theories are non perturbatively unified within M theory, where different string theories appear as corners of M theory, along with another one, 11 dimensional supergravity. Now, the relationship between different string theories was realized within the context of weak, strong duality, so weak, strong coupling duality where one type of string theory was related to another one by uh, relating weakly coupled original theory to strongly coupled dual theory and vice versa. The simplest prototype is an example when we start with perturbative type 2 theory where string coupling is small, then we increase the coupling, we enter the interior of M theory, and when this coupling becomes strong, we arrange the spectrum and properties of 11 dimensional supergravity 
and the decoupling actually becomes uh, identified with the 11 dimension. So, realization that actually there are other equivalent corners of M theory um, pointed uh, for us to the direction to start studying particle physics consequences of other corners, and in particular, the one associated with open stream became very promising with the advent of the brains, and in particular, within this context, I would like to describe the model perspective of the origin of particle physics. So, it's the brains that will play a crucial role in explaining the features of the standard model. And so let's go step by step. Well, the first feature that we want to explain is non abelian gate symmetry, which actually, in the context of deep brains, comes out rather trivially. In particular picture that I'm going to choose, uh, the deep brains will be described as objects where open streams end. So in particular, the P brain will extend the P plus one dimensional word volume and uh, open stream with charges will add on this boundary. Quantization of such open streams would always produce for us massless particles that are associated with P1 object and so U1 gate symmetry is always there for a single brain. Taking a set of parallel brains will produce for us, uh, after quantization of open stream, set of n different massless gauge bosons. So the symmetry would be U1 cross U1 cross U1 and times. In addition, there are open streams that start on one brain and end on the other, but because the brains are, uh, are, are separated, the spin one objects that come from, from quantization of those streams turn out to be massive. However, if we make this n brains coincident, put them together, this open stream between nearby brains will uh, eventually produce for us massless gauge bosons uh, and thus the gauge symmetry of n brains that are coincident will be U n. This is rather trivial and by now very old story. And, but uh, basically, the, uh, the context within, within which we engineer the non abelian gate symmetry with the brains. Uh, before I continue about other issues of standard models, let me just make a digression because the picture in which I was describing the brains is the so called field theoretical picture when we can actually exactly quantize open streams which sit on boundaries of. Uh, 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 of deep brains, and so we have exact conformal field theory techniques to address the spectrum in this context. However, this object also has a dual behavior in the fact that the gravity theory that derives from string theory, they are also viewed as sources of p plus one dimensional uh, p, p plus one uh, uh, potential forms. And basically, in the supergravity context, uh, the brains uh, curve the space time. In the throat of such configurations, the space time is constant, negative cosmological constant, uh, which would use the energy of the space time. So, the natural question that one asks, well, at least Mother Athena asked himself that at a deeper level was are those configurations? Uh, those uh, uh, dual interpretations of the brain related, and indeed the answer was yes, and it was quantified by Maldacena as the correspondence between conformal field theory and uh, anti distributed space time, where one description is uh, dual to another one, again through weak strong coupling duality. So it basically goes under the name of idea CFT correspondence and uh, uh, relates for us gauge theories and gravities. So that's an important insight that was gained in the late 90s and actually led to a number of very important gravitational roles of brains. I will just very briefly highlight and add to plus some of my work uh, uh, that, that, that were relevant. In particular, black holes in string theory are built up of such gravitational objects with brains, but then these configurations in the dual interpretation 
as field theory excitations allow us to address microscopic properties, study of microscopic properties of such black holes. Another important spin-off is the interpretation of the world gravitational effects, the work if our work does live on such gravitational objects, the so-called brain world, and the new features associated with the Randall syndrome scenario. The third one that is actually relevant for my context is also uh, viewing um, um, sources, uh, gravitational sources associated with this deep brain to produce for us non-trivial P-form potentials, which actually uh, the so-called gravity fluxes, which can actually be responsible for fixing the shape of compactive light space, and that's important actually for the issue of modular stabilization, which I will not touch, but we can call this in thesis for Fernando. Fernando stocks and also computer stocks, uh, and in particular in the context of intersecting brains, some progress has been also made concretely with the modular stabilization. But I will not talk about those things. I will turn back to the field theory interpretation of the brains and try to get the rest of our spectrum out of them. So this part was trivial and coincident brains gave us you anti symmetry. Now we want to reproduce chiral matter. And for that purpose, to reproduce massless um, quarks and leptons, uh, I have to turn to the issue of compactification. So that's one of our plagues in string theory, namely a consistent theory is the 10 dimensions, our world is four dimensional, and to, uh, to reach four dimensions, we have to curl up six extra dimensions on special spaces with special curvature Calabi-Yau spaces because we want to also reproduce and ensure n equal 1 supersymmetry in four dimensions. Since this can be done on many Calabi-Yau spaces, there are many possibilities of describing four dimensional string solutions. But the ones I want to talk about are those with deep brains. So now we are complicating the complicating situation even more because within this context of such a, a space-time structure, we introduce boundaries of open strings, which are the P brains. So they extend as boundaries in P plus 1 world volume dimensions. 3 plus 1 would be world volume dimensions of our world. And P minus 3 extra dimensions will have to live in internal space, wrapping uh, P minus 3 dimensional cycles in internal space. So we can have more than one type of brains. We can add a few brains. They, again, fill up our space in 3 plus 1, where volume directions say q minus 3 dimensions have to wrap another q minus 3 dimensional cycle in internal space. Now, different brains of that type can intersect with each other since such cycles can, can intersect with each other. They can actually uh, also be uh, embedded into each other, so that the whole structure of possible brain configurations in this concept, uh, context has uh, increased tremendously, and in, in, in general, there is a very weak structure of possible solutions. So I want to uh, worry you with things that really didn't work for realistic particle physics, but we turn to the example, which turns out to be very instructive and produces for us very much hands-on features of the particle physics. So my focus will be on specific brains, P6 brains. So this P6 brains, giving 3 plus 1 dimension of our world, and extra 3 word volume dimensions wrap 3 cycles in internal space. So we take one set of brains that wrap one particular 3 cycle, and another set of brains that wrap another type of three cycle. Two three cycles in six dimensional space generically intersect at points. And the number of such intersections is just a product of the corresponding homology cycles, which is a topological number. So let's try to take a magnifying glass at such intersection 
and see what happens to streams when we quantize them. So at such intersections, when we quantize streams that start on one brain and end on another set of brains, there is always a massless state that corresponds in four dimensions to spin one half particle. So actually at each of such intersections, in general, we see that there is, a, there is an appearance of a massless matter candidate, which would, in principle, for us, uh, uh, highlight the geometric origin of massless matter. And the fact that the number of intersections that we have is geometric against the topological number, that would also provide for us geometric interpretation of family permutations. So with these features, we are equipped with technology to engineer standard models in this context. So in particular, let me remind you, if you take an A set of the six brains that drive one particular cycle, and an B set of the six brains that drive another type of cycle, the, game, the, the quantization of strings that start and end on the same brain will produce for us gauge bosons in U and A and U and B, none of the gauge representation. And at each intersection of such cycles, we will get massless spin one half fermion that will now be charged in bifundamental representation under the gate symmetry of one set of brains and the other set of brains. And of course, the number of such fermions would be again the topological number of flowers of the knowledge cycles. So taking three sets of one type of brains, two sets of another type of brains, and engineering construction in such a way that the cycles that those brains wrap intersect exactly three times produces for us a candidate gate symmetry for U3. Strong interactions, U2, electronic interactions. At each of these intersections, we will have a massless fermion that would be triplet under U3 color and doublet under U2. So it would be the right candidate for left-handed quarks and engineering intersections so that we have exactly three of them that will produce for us three copies of left-handed quarks. There are additional subtleties with uh, properly uh, obtaining the so-called anomalous U1 hypercharge. Uh, nevertheless, we can do that. And then one would say we have a standard model. Well, there are a few more consistency conditions that we have to worry about. Since we have compactified theory on internal compact space, we have to ensure that no net the brain charge escapes this internal space. Those are the so-called homological uh, uh, ramon ramon Chesler cancellation conditions. And there are additional conditions that actually we need uh, to create supersymmetric spectra in such a way that the cycles that brains wrap are in supersymmetric, the so-called special Lagrangian. Uh, this is also constraining. Nevertheless, uh, when one implements those technical issues, one has the building blocks of supersymmetric standard model. Yeah. Uh, actually, generically, we get them in chiral representations. Oh, Nevertheless, okay. yeah, there are some examples when they are normal on chiral, and then we can, uh, but then it's an issue of hierarchy because through brain splitting, when they are non chiral, we can make them massless and massive and create new parameters. But most of the time, they are actually chiral by nature. They still appear as a small intersection. Uh, so, how do we do explicit constructions? Again, we don't do it on general Calabrian space. In particular, since we want to actually construct such uh, solutions on spaces we have when, where we have full control of uh, uh, spectrum and public calculations, so we turn to special Calabrian spaces, which are uh, orbifold. They are constructed by starting with six torus and modding out uh, by a set of discrete symmetries, which creates for us a particular orbifold construction. And uh, I like to show that. I would like to show that, but even as well before, it's hard to show. 
Nevertheless, I could show you how the two-dimensional orbifold looks like. So we start with this torus. We do the two-dimensional torus and we mod out, identify points on the torus under 180 degree rotation, which would produce for us that kind of space, which is still flat, but has a set of singularities on that side. So uh, the conformal field theory techniques are still available within this context, including adding brain strings. So what brains will be here, they would be wrapping one cycle. So there will be our U3 brain wrapping one cycle like this. There will be our U2 brain wrapping another one cycle. And then we choose the third one that would be related to hypercharge. And then we wrap the third cycle. And for example, at the intersection of red and green brain, we would have left-handed quarks. Red and black, we would have right-handed quarks. And black and green, there will be an analog of a fixed spiral fix. And since, you know, at each intersection, there is another family. And actually, this is already hinting to study interactions among the yeah. Right. Model and stabilization, which I have explicitly avoided, right? Because, uh, but I will look into them at the end if I have enough time. Okay. Yes, model stabilization is a big issue, but let's focus on that this time. Okay, so this is basically uh, the content within which the progressive construction can be made, basically based on this solar orbitals. And actually, uh, about six, seven years ago, large classes of non-supersymmetric standard models were constructed by the Berlin and Munich group and Madrid group. But very soon after, actually, also conditions of the, su the supersymmetry were implemented in this context, uh, in particular on the two chromosomes people that led to the first three family supersymmetric standard models. By now, uh, there was a lot of uh, activity in constructing semi-realistic uh, particle physics uh, on, uh, with such intersecting brains, and majority of supersymmetric constructions were based are based on D2 crazy two orbitals. In particular, there were uh, uh, there were uh, really systematic study of semi-realistic constructions uh, done uh, a large number of them at Penn. There were generalization to construction of the three cycles, also done uh, in collaboration with Blumenhagen and Shield. Uh, there were also uh, progress made in calculating couplings, in particular Yukawa couplings, um, and one loop corrections. People even ventured into studying landscape within this context, in particular the Munich group and more recently Douglas and Taylor. There are some special examples also given on other sets of orbitals. And last but not least, there has been also tremendous progress made in the uh, abstract construction of uh, uh, such uh, uh, models within a uh, non geometric phase that is associated with rational conformal field theory, the so called Gibner's models that also actually produce large number of semi-realistic models, primarily led by Chalakas. So I would really like to highlight very briefly two things, maybe to show you there is actually a concrete model. And then I just want to show you also that actually sometimes write explicitly about such a calculate such a color complex, uh, and there is a compound formula that one can produce within this context. So first, uh, an example of three family standard model that is basically based uh, on the two cross into orbital with U4 cross as U2 left cross as U2 right bit symmetry. Those are the wrapping numbers of U4, U2, U2 brains. And actually, this wrapping numbers originally proposed did not give globally consistent model, but if you embed it within the two cross into orbital and add additional brains, in particular, the addition of new brains that are needed, one does produce the globally consistent model. Well, it's not ideal because it's not an issue of um, 
getting standard model particles, we end up actually with additional chiral exotic that happen at intersections of additional brains with the standard model brains. And this happens to be a generic problem that we are doing. So the other example I want to show you that actually I can show you an explicit forum for the Yukawa couplings. So this is basically calculating Yukawa couplings between the quarks and the Higgs field. In this context, uh, so this is just for one torus, but think of so duplicating that by two additional chlorides. Uh, and a uh, conformal field theory techniques again produce for us the explicit form for such a power coupling that has the prefactor that is quantum and depends only on local pro properties on actual angles where the states appear, as well as the classical part that depends on the areas of those triangles associated with extra energy that is needed for strings to stretch between those different intersection points. Uh, and so again, such an expression turns out to have geometric features. Okay, so what is the status? Well, the status is we have a sizable number of uh, semi-realistic models uh, using uh, orbital constructions, maybe uh, namely explicit geometric phase of uh, intersecting brains, uh, but not all is well. Typically such models, while well, producing broad features of the standard model gauge group and three copies of families, uh, have additional chiral exotics. If you really calculate in detail such a cover coupling, there are phenomenological problems with features of Yukawa coupling, and of course the issue you raised, there is full issue of full model and standardization, though some progress has been made. So I refer to this problem really, you know, I, I give this big show, how it's geometric, how we get it, how we can engineer it, everything looks in broad strokes great, but the real devil is in the details, because once we focus on particular models, they are detailed problems that we are dealing with. I should also contrast that with the developments in rational conformal field theory constructions, the non-geometric phase of type field theory, where actually there are models without parallel exotics. However, couplings that typically don't, don't have hierarchical properties and can impressively be calculated, nevertheless, no one has done that yet because it's actually hard. And since this is in a non-geometric phase, the issue of stability, modular stabilization is also important. Okay. So this would be like the end of the talk. But now I want to really cloud some developments still with non-perturbative features, uh, which were basically motivated by problems that we are facing at the level of couplings for these constructions. So let me just point out a few of them that motivated me and Ralph to start thinking about non-perturbative effects. So in particular, let me remind you that you cover couplings for neutrinos. Typically are in this context Dirac couplings. However, their magnitude is typically that of the charge sector. It's very hard to tune those triangles that I showed you that we would have the sizable methods for charge matter and then um, uh, uh, have extremely small masses for neutrinos. It's actually very hard to do that in this context. So, uh, so it would be very desirable in this context to, to see where the origin of my Orana neutrino masses could be and whether we can really engineer the uh, seesaw mechanism for, uh, for neutrinos in this context. Another one that, that uh, Shamit was uh, alluded to, uh, Higgs doublets typically come as a current field, and so we do not have new parameters for that. There's also another negative thing that uh, we have. There were large classes of su 5 dot models constructed, but it turns out that certain couplings are actually absent. Okay. And this connect in particular for standard that this would mean the absence of top fork, which was very discouraging for me personally. Um, and I should point out that for all those features, by around neutrino masses, new parameter, absence of such coupling, 
are basically due to the fact that such couplings violate perturbatively the conservation of the so-called anomalous fields. So, if non uh, so uh, if introduction of non-perturbative effects due to E instantons that could actually non-perturbatively violate such U1 coupling and introduce those couplings that was key in our motivation to study the instantons. So, uh, I should point out that, you know, that wasn't the first work that was addressing non-perturbative effects in string theory, but it sort of opened a new activity in the field. Uh, so in the first set of papers, these issues were addressed, and maybe even Shamil will say some of the things related to his work. And then at the same time, uh, shortly after, there were uh, next generation of papers that were also addressing these related issues, but in more technical details. So within the context I'm talking about, it so happens that the paper of Ibanez and Oranga basically had the same ideas we had. And then subsequent work, uh, which involved extensive search within global Russian conformal field theories for models that could generate such uh, perturbatively forbidden terms, was recently performed by Ibanez, Shalakens, and Oranga, though the search was really not successful in terms of finding such models. And the last one is actually in terms of coupling calculations due to instantons. There was also recent work by the Muni group, which addressed not only the so-called tree-level calculation in the instance of instanton background that we did, but also included one group. All right, very briefly, what do we want to do? We want to see, we want to uh, probe number to which we have by calculating new amplitudes in the background of such the instantons. So those are actually Euclidean configurations that extend only in the internal space. They are points in four, uh, four dimensional space time. So DP brain instanton track P plus one dimensional cycles in internal space. And in particular, within the intersecting brain context with our distinct brains, the only can uh, good candidates for such instantons are the two brain instantons, which wrap three cycles in internal space, just like the six brains. But the six brains, of course, also live within the world. So, what we want to uh, uh, introduce is such the two instantons, which would wrap volume minimizing cycles since we want to have the minimum of the local action of this, this instanton. And another important feature is that we have to, to look at the couplings that turn out to be non-zero, we have to integrate over all the zero modes in the instant on background. And in particular, fermionic zero mode has to appear for relative couplings to become other exactly ones. So this is very strong constraint to tell us whether we have couplings or not in this in this background. So um, yeah, uh, due to lack of time, you know, I, I really have to skip some of the issues. Maybe I should just emphasize our focus is to see how superpotential terms can be used now in the presence of such instantons. Uh, such terms would be proportional to the exponential to the, the instanton action, which is proportional to the volume of this three cycles that instanton wrap, plus it's also proportional to the gauge potential that can be stored by the six brain. And that's the one that is not invariant under anomalous U1. It transforms under anomalous U1 in a very precise way, and thus renders this part of the uh, instant on action to be gauge non-invariant. And so such term cannot appear by itself. However, if we add matter field that is charged under this U1 in such a way that their total charge exactly cancels the net charge of this instant on action contribution, we can have terms like that. And those are basic selection rules by which we determine whether terms like that can appear in the superpotential. And so the selection rule is very neatly explained in terms of the fermionic zero modes, uh, which again, I don't have time to go into details. I should just emphasize the detailed analysis tells us that to have the right number of zero fermionic modes to create really such terms in the superpotential, our instant on has to wrap a rigid cycle and has to be invariant under the so-called oriented projection. 
Another thing is the observation that there are additional zero fermionic modes that appear now at the intersection of this instanton and the particular deep brain that has anomalous U1. So again, geometrically, we introduce an internal space cycle, volume minimizing cycle, rigid cycle that the instanton wraps, and then we have a deep brain that is source of anomalous U1. And at this intersection, there is precisely one fermionic <coughs> zero mode. We can count all such fermionic zero modes. Their features are, again, topological. The number of such zero modes is, again, associated with the intersection, number of those cycles. And actually, we count the total charge of the zero mode is precisely the same charge as, as is the one associated with the instant of action contribution. So that basically confirms the index theorem. All right, so basically what we did, we developed the whole instant on calculus uh, uh, within conformal field theory to, to determine in detail selection rule and quantitatively determine such coupling, but I really don't have time. I already expected that. So the only thing I'm going to do in the next few minutes is really demonstrate how this works in the case of the Majorana masses. So uh, in particular, so what we typically have is neutrino Dirac masses in this context that whose order of magnitude is that of the charge sector. And now we want to create the actual Majorana masses associated with the right-handed neutrinos. These right-handed neutrinos are represented in this context as standard model singlets charged typically under two gauge groups, anomalous U1 gauge groups with fixed anomalous charges because they appear at those intersections. And, of course, couplings like that violate the normal T1s. So now we add for such um, right-handed neutrinos that appear at such intersections, we add the instant on background. So we add a rigid cycle that uh, into instant on wraps. And at the intersection of A brain, we get zero fermionic modes. And at the intersection of instant on B brain, we get zero fermionic modes. And it's basically this type of couplings that we have to calculate in string theory. So to get something that would look like my Orana mass, we would need two types of this diagrams like that to calculate. So what we would have to do, we would have to square such amplitudes and see if they are non-zero. And they would be non-zero if and only if we have the precisely the right number of fermionic zero modes. In particular, this instant one should not intersect with standard model because those would be extra zero modes. It should intersect with A-brain exactly twice to separate exactly two <coughs> zero modes for such amplitude with the A-brain and exactly twice again with the B brain to saturate exactly uh, two zero modes coming in the center. So, if we engineer a model like that with this feature, we would have non zero Majorana coupling of that type, and those are the precise uh, uh, conditions under which we would obtain that. Well, while this is in general uh, very well defined, and I hope I convinced you very geometric in nature. In practice, to construct globally consistent models that would have these features is very hard. The only thing we would manage to do is really construct an example of a model based on the um, 2 cross 2 orbit rule with rigid cycles that was actually a local model only, that model with extra brains. We engineered these intersection numbers, but we couldn't construct a global model in this context. Nevertheless, Within this local model, we are able to calculate Majorana masses precisely in terms of the instant of action, worksheet instant of contribution, and quantum part that now involves angles between brains and instantons, as well as one loop correction done by the Muni group. And so, in principle, we can engineer in this context a model where this Majorana masses turn out to be 10 to the 10 GV, together with the Iraq masses, which are in the region of. Uh, uh, TV or less, we can then engineer the seasonic mechanism in this context. 
Well, the absurd application to neon term, to R30 violated copies, as well as the appearance of coupling that we originally thought are not there, even by numbers of the defect. And so this I think I don't have time to talk about what will appear soon. So let me conclude. I try to give you an overview of the progress we have made with particle physics um, constructions of standard models within modern string theory that involves intersecting degrees. The real concrete constructions are primarily on toroidal orbifolds. By now we have sizable number of realistic models actually with systematic searches to perform, but actually none of the models is fully realistic. We can calculate coupling such as Yukawa couplings. Again, there are issues there. The recent exciting development is the study of non perturbative effects due to instantons. Again, I try to geometrically present to you the effects due to such configurations. And in principle, we can now create new hierarchical couplings such as Majorana masses. Uh, in particular, there is a local construction for CISO mechanism, but also in principle, we can construct models for new parameters or certain such Yukawa couplings can be generated. Nevertheless, what I find really a serious challenge at this point is to find a global models that would have realistic features and would realize this in the instanton effect. Huge extensive search by Ibanez Huranga and Shalakan did not produce a single model with global context, which was quite a disappointment. So, what do I see? Progress? Well, I do hope that we will further develop techniques in particular more on Calabiaos for concrete constructions. Right now we are focusing extensively uh, by studying further non-perturbative effects such as vacuum P or restabilization due to instantons, which would relate to SUSI breaking or open spin module stabilization. Effects of additional zero modes if cycles are not rigid or if we have additional modes at the intersection of grains and their uh, instantons and their images. And last, I think it's very important that quantitatively we improve the study uh, so that we get more realistic models. Also those that are globally consistent and would really demonstrate the appearance of this unperturbative effect I was talking about. Well, should I be optimistic that eventually we will find something that in fine print satisfies all those conditions? Not there yet, but I hope that some of the things I told you about will play a key role. Well, intersection numbers, you see, lots of those things are topological, right? Detailed calculation of such amplitudes is not really possible, especially with classical effects. Yeah, you see, we know very little about concretely. We need special Lagrangians, <coughs> both for instantons and for grains to have superstimulate, and not much is known about that. And nobody has really remotely realistic things within this context. There may be better chance on the type to be side with magnetized brains, and we hope to develop the things there. things that we are addressing uh, that, that you also address within context of lattices, but there was one to, I had to cut corners, so I didn't go in the direction of combination of lattices and those deep brain events. But something you would see in the general double weight picture is not the large Majorana mass, it's the Majorana mass of the light picture. So then you can deal with small color coupling and the small Majorana mass. So for example, if you have Majorana mass from a PV and the small color coupling, 